Hey, welcome to the evening Bible study. Every Wednesday we have the Bible study. Especially I thanks be to God for Brother Matthew came and he was crying. It's good to good to cry in the house of the Lord. When you cry out, then God can hear your prayer. And then as you express, uh, you say that all our congregation welcome you. You know, as I told you, your pain is our pain. Your joy is our joy. Why? You are, a, you are a, our family in Christ Jesus. You are my brother, brother. Your father is the same my father. Do you know that? Your father is my father. Doesn't matter our color. Uh, we are one family in Christ Jesus. And thank God, brother, what's his name? Dennis and Tina, they call you every day. <laughs> Wonderful to call you. And Dennis, is, Dennis and Tina are from me three days on the truck. Okay. Well done, well done. Praise God. You know, we care for each other. We are suffering for one another. This evening, we would like studying the godly wisdom. How many of you need a godly wisdom? I need a godly wisdom. And if you look at the James chapter 1, book of James chapter 1, verse 5. Who is uh, James? Jesus. Younger brother of Jesus. James chapter 1, verse 5. <coughs> James chapter 1, verse 5 say, If any one of you lack wisdom, he should ask God, who give generously to all without finding Paul, and it will be given to him. Anybody of you lack wisdom? Uh, I need more wisdom actually. How about you? Don't tell me I'm full of wisdom. You are a liar. <laughs> you need a wisdom. Everybody needs a wisdom and knowledge and understanding and revelation. And then verse 6. But when you ask, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blow and tossed by the wind. That man should not think it, he, he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. When you ask, you need to ask in God. You need to ask in God with a wholeheartedly. You have to believe them. Yeah? I need the wisdom of God. Yeah? The Bible say, probably chapter 16, verse 16 say, How much better to get wisdom than gold, to get insight rather than silver. The Bible urges us, Often to ask wisdom, seek wisdom above all things. Yeah, you and I need a wisdom. Yeah, wisdom is very, very important in our life. Beginning of wisdom is what? Fear of the law. Fear of the law. Look at the Proverbs chapter four, verse seven. Who is the author of a book of a proverb? Solomon. Solomon, he was the most wise man in the whole planet. And then Proverbs chapter 4, <clears throat> verse 7 say, Wisdom is uh, supreme. Therefore get wisdom. Through it cost all you have. Get understanding. Get wisdom. Get understanding. You can pay the price for wisdom and understanding. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah? We need a wisdom. I need a wisdom. Without the wisdom is a, you know, wisdom is the one to, you have a knowledge. Yeah? When you have knowledge, wisdom is you can use the, the knowledge properly for the glory of the law. Do you remember when Solomon, he prayed to God, he get a wisdom. When he get a wisdom, what was happening? Two men fighting. Because of what? Baby. Baby. Two women claim that this baby is mine. Another, no, this is mine. Both of them claim that this is my baby. Oh, because of one of the baby died. Both of women, they delivered the baby, but one baby died. And another woman said, no, this is mine. Both of them, they claim that this baby is mine. And do you know what King Solomon said? He knows, which means he had the knowledge who is a true woman true mother of this baby. He say, I have a good idea. He asked his attendants, bring the sword. Sharp, long sword. <clears throat> he say, 
I want to cut half. One for you, half. One for you. And that woman say, Good idea. Do it. <laughs> fake, fake murder. <laughs> But real murder. No. Give this baby for that woman. And King Solomon say, I know. I know. Who is a true mother? You are a true mother. Here you are. This is your baby. And then he put the, that fake woman put in the prison. Do you understand? This is a wisdom. Wisdom is the one to use your knowledge properly. So many people studying. So many people studying the Bible. So many people pray, but they don't using the word of God practically. The wisdom is so uh, it's wonderful. Yeah, well done. You come here today. You know, when you get the wisdom, your life is a Amazing is a prosper. You know, unfortunately, Solomon he get the amazing wisdom, and he wrote the book Song of Songs when he was young. And when he had the full of wisdom, he wrote the book Book of Proverb. And before he died, he wrote the book. What is that? Ecclesiastics, the last book. And he write down. This is the whole duty of man. Two things he said. Duty of man. What is that? Fear God and keep his all his commandment and he concluded like that but unfortunately he get the amazing wisdom and then actually God asked him when he sacrificed to God for thousands of times God said what shall I do for you you know what King Solomon say give me your wisdom and God say you don't ask for wealth and honor or you you know you know destroy the, your enemy but you looking for wisdom because you want to look at my people and God say I will give wealth and honor and fame and then you know protect God give everything Solomon is the most well-known person in the whole planet around the 3,000 years ago wonderful wonderful man of God when you get full of wisdom unfortunately his godly wisdom become a worldly wisdom that is the main problem He had uh, 1,000 uh, wives, 300 is a uh, main wife, second wife, how can you call her? Concubine. Huh? Concubine. Concubine. 700. Terrible. And especially he married with a foreign queens, like a Siva, Ethiopian queen. And he get all the idols from foreign, foreign uh, people and worship the idols. Can you imagine? He get the amazing wisdom from God in the beginning. Godly wisdom. What happened? Worship the idols. Because we will read uh, uh, today Second Kings. Eh? Why the Israel, the kingdom divide? Because of whom? Who's? Solomon. King Solomon worshiped the idols. Because of King Solomon, he worshiped the idols. What was happening? the Israel divide. Southern Israel and the Northern Israel. South you call the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, two tribes. And North, ten tribes. You saw that today. Most of the kings, they, what they do? They did the evil things in the eyes of God. Most of them. King Israel, he do it right, righteously. But most of the kings, wicked, wicked. Unfortunately. Why? Because of King Solomon worship the idols. Therefore, when you receive the blessing and then you know your life, your glorious life, wonderful. But how can you keep it? That's most important. Do you remember King David? King David, he was a fighter. When he was in the battlefield, yeah, he destroyed all the enemies. But when he become a king of Israel, he doesn't need to go to the battlefield. Why? Because all his uh, you know, armies and then ministers uh, working for him. What he does? He working uh, in the veranda, in the, in the palace. He enjoy he just working like that. What does he He saw the Bathsheba. <laughs> Do you know what happened? He committed adultery. When he has everything, he has got the power, fame, and money, everything failed. How do I know? Look at the 
King David, he was a man after God's heart. Mighty man of God, he failed. Why? He didn't keep him. He get the godly wisdom. He feared the Lord, but when he has everything, he failed. This is an example from King David and his son, King Solomon. This principle is still working in all of the world right like now. Yeah? If you're hungry, if you don't have money, if you don't, you know, uh, uncomfortable, you come before the Lord and pray to God, Lord, help me. You cry unto God. You humble yourself and you receive the grace and mercy and God direct to you and bless you. But when you have everything, you don't need to pray. You rely on your bank account. You rely on the, your own power, on your skills, your own your ability. You don't need God. That is the main problem. Look at all the Western European countries. They have lost Jesus. Look at uh, India or Africa, some even <clears throat> some uh, Asia, some poor and difficult country. They cry out to Jesus. There is the revival. This is a pattern. All of the world. Therefore, when you are on the top of a mountain, you know how to enjoy on the top of a mountain, singing and worshiping God, fear the Lord. Yeah? But unfortunately, people, they difficult to keep it. But you can see the good example and bad example. God didn't allow all these uh, you know, authors in the Bible, 40 uh, authors to write down uh, from Genesis to Book of Revelation. God write down everything, people's mistake and people's uh, you know, sins and people's blessing and, and, and the curses, all things they write down uh, in the Bible. For what? Learn from their mistake. Learn from their, their successful life. Yeah? Therefore, you need a godly wisdom continuously. People start with the spirit and finish by what? Flesh. This is very, very dangerous. King Saul, first king of Israel, he received an anointing by prophet Samuel. He started with the spirit of the living God, but he finished by flesh. He killed himself. He suicided. He's in hell right now, unfortunately. And then one of the disciples of Jesus, he is a treasurer, Judah, between Judah. And then whatever, he started with the spirit, and then finally he killed himself. Therefore, you know, <clears throat> well done, you received the last Sunday, we pray to God for you, and received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well done, you come to the Wednesday Bible study, well done, it's good for you. And then, please, I prophesy for you, Matthew, and everybody, you will continually lead by the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. You will continually lead by the Holy Spirit on the end of your life, not by flesh. Okay. End of the Holy Spirit. Oh, and, yeah, this yeah. This morning, Pastor Paul, but I forgot to press the door back. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> We're waiting for you. Oh, uh, <clears throat> and then, um, yeah. Sorry to Praise God. Press the bell is like yeah. lead by faith. I know now. <laughs> now you know that. But there are different kind of wisdom. First, uh, look at the Corinthians chapter nine, chapter three, verse nineteen. Corinthians chapter three, verse nineteen say, "For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in God's sight." Can I read it for you again? For the wisdom of the, this world is what foolishness, foolishness in God's sight. And verse 20 say, The Lord knows that the thought of wise are fut uh, futile. There is an obviously a difference between the godly wisdom and, and, and worldly wisdom. Look at the James chapter 3. James chapter 3 verse 13 to 17. As I told you, James is a younger brother of Jesus. Actually, one of the wisdom book is the book of James in New Testament. James 3, 13 to 17 say, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deed done in the <coughs> humility that comes from wisdom. But if you uh, have a bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, 
do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such a wisdom does not come down <coughs> from heaven, but is utterly unspiritual of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find the disorder and every evil practice. <coughs> do you understand? Every evil practice comes from the worldly wisdom. <coughs> you saw this, some, uh, Solomon. But look, but the wisdom that come from heaven is the first of all, what's that? Pure. All pure, pure, pure. All pure. Amazing clean. Amazing holy. Be pure. How many of you like the all pure? I like the pure. Yeah, pure. All pure. First of all, pure. And then, peace loving. How many of you like peace loving? It's amazing. Yeah, wisdom. And considerate submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemaker who saw in peace, race and harvest of righteousness. This is the wisdom that comes from heaven. Do you have these kind of things? Wonderful wisdom, wonderful wisdom. You can see the worldly wisdom and the godly wisdom. You need to pray to our Lord, would you help me to get the godly wisdom every day? Fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. Godly wisdom is, of course, yeah, from God, on us, God. Godly wisdom starts with the <coughs> fear of the Lord. Yeah? Start with what? Fear of the Lord and result in a holy life. Fear of the Lord. Yeah? Beginning. Beginning of wisdom is what? Fear of the law. And then result is a holy life. Can you say to each other, let us have a holy life? Say to each other, let us have a holy life. Wonderful holy life. Beautiful life. Worldly wisdom, on the other hand, is not concerned with honoring God, but with pleasing oneself. With worldly wisdom, we may become are educated and street smart and have common sense then enable us to play the worldly game successfully. Godly wisdom enables us to prepare ourselves for our eternity. That is different. Worldly wisdom, how can I get more? Yeah, more selfish, more greed. But godly wisdom prepare for Eternity. Eternity. Do you know you come here? For what? Eternity. Do you know the Bible speaks about our outwardly man and inwardly man. Two men. Our inside inwardly will become more younger, more stronger, more powerful, more pure, more holy. Of course, when you're getting older, you know, we can see there's some winkers and getting older. Is a, we know that. You know? When you become born again Christian, you will see your inner man become more stronger and stronger and stronger. I know that. Because your inner man, stronger and holy and powerful and pure, and even appearance outside is pure and holy and glorious life. How many understand that? Yeah? If inside is very dirty, filthy and smelly, full of junk things inside, evil thought, What's happened? Everything good, every good or bad thing come out from your mouth, from your body, from everything. And then your room, mess around. You saw the Simon's room last week. Full of what? Idols. You know, when I went to his house, over 20 Mr. Uh, Dick, full of witchcraft books, DVD, old idols. I cannot, I cannot touch the ground. Full of uh, sound. <laughs> Full of idols, full of dirty things. Why? But inside is dirty. What is inside in you will come out. Do you understand? Therefore, when I talk with somebody, within five minutes I can discern who they are. When you come here, you just cry and <laughs> it's okay. Oh, oh, I'm a big man. Oh, I cry. It's good for you to cry. Time to cry out like a baby cry. Good for you. <clears throat> I never cry when I was not born again. 
I was a detective when I was a policeman. I never cry. Never. How do men cry? No. It's unacceptable. But when I become a born-again Christian, my heart soft. My heart so soft and then and, 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 and fresh and wonderful and cry easily. Because when I cry, the Holy Spirit and touch my heart and the blood of Jesus cleans my heart. I used to be a you know, stubborn man. Arrogant man, you know, disobedient man, stiff neck, that kind of man. But God transformed my heart. Good for you to cry in the house of the Lord. The Bible says, call upon me, cry out, cry out. And God hear your prayer when you cry out. It's good for you. But you can understand that worldly wisdom always try to gain and, and for earth, earthly things. This one, this one, this other things. But Godly wisdom prepare for eternity. Even if God called me tonight, oh, praise God, thank you, Jesus, uh, for me to leave his guys, to die gain. Can you imagine? For me, die, much better place. Do you, do you understand? What were you doing Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the heaven now. You know, amazing peace I have in my heart now. You know, heaven is inside of you. Heaven is not far away. You know, while you live in this world, you must enjoy the heaven. How many of you enjoy the heaven? You really enjoy the heaven. You see, every day I have amazing peace inside of my heart. Sometimes, two times, nobody in my house, and I sing and dance in my room. Nobody. I wish be hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I was so happy. I was so, you know, the wham. Oh, by his loving kindness, he loves me. Of course, sometimes near down I repent my sins. Lord, forgive my sins. If something wrong in our church, in my family, is my my fault, my sin, forgive me. Have mercy on me. I was prayer. These are amazing things. This is a godly wisdom. With godly wisdom, we trade the earthly value of biblical value. Look at one John chapter two. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16. This is a very important scripture. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 and 16. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything is the, uh, in the world the craving of a sinful man. Lost of eyes and them um, boasting of a man and lost of eyes. Yeah, this is what he has done. Uh, he has and does. It comes not from the Father but from the world. Yeah, the world, the world and its desire pass away. But the man who does the will of God lives forever. You can see the worldly wisdom. <coughs> You know, you need to against these uh, three things. Lust of flesh, lust of eyes, and proud of life. These things is a, this is a earthly value. We have to against it. We have to kick it out. We recognize we are citizens of another kingdom. How many of you have any passport? <coughs> yeah, I have two passports. Heavenly passport and earthly passport. We have a heavenly passport, another kingdom. We make a choice. Reflect, then. <coughs> yeah, can you look at the uh, Philippians chapter one, verse twenty-seven? Philippians chapter one. <coughs> Philippians chapter one, verse twenty-seven. I can read it for you. Whatever happened. Conduct yourself in the manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my actions, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit and containing as one man for the faith of the gospel. Yeah. And Paul say about uh, worldly wisdom and godly wisdom. And you can see it, you have the faith of the gospel of Lord Jesus Christ if you have the uh, godly wisdom. If you have the godly wisdom, 
Yeah, I know who you are. Ten years later, or twenty years later, and uh, very soon you'll be a uh, you'll have a birthday. Yeah, this Friday. And I, I love to working together with you after you're married, and then your children are working together, go to all of the world, and then um, twenty years later you become more holy. You still preach the gospel, and thirty years later, forty years later, still follow Jesus and preach the gospel. This is my joy. Some people believe in Jesus for for a while, for three, four years, and then they go back to the world again. Terrible, terrible. Do you know why I respect that man? I know him for twenty-seven years. Twenty-seven years. <coughs> he is my big brother. He is my personal assistant. He teach me the English. He he help me. I think within ten to twenty-seven years, a big fighting for five time. And he gave me the church key. I don't want blind gone away. <laughs> we forgive one another, and then we thank you to God. We working together, and then glorify the name of the Lord. He still follow Jesus. Last week is his birthday. Yeah, over seventy years old. Thanks be to God. I follow Jesus. Yeah, it's not wonderful. Both of us continue to follow Jesus. Yeah. Iron sharp iron friend, you know, shopping friend. I know who you are through your friendship. Drug dealer, have a friend of a drug dealer. Drug addict, there are many friends of a drug addict. Alcoholic, all these things. From now on, you are my friend. Yeah, <laughs> you can, you know, you join the good company. You know, I was working in the Brixton prison as a chaplain. Many prisoners end up in prison because of they joined the wrong company. Drug dealer, drug addict, alcohol, all these you know cheating people, and then they join together and they end up in prison because they joined the wrong company. And uh, we have the godly wisdom. Okay, godly wisdom is very very important. And look at the Philippians three verse twenty. Philippians chapter three verse twenty say. But our citizenship is the heaven, and we eagerly wait a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of we have a citizenship of heaven? Yeah, I have a heavenly passport. Yeah, my citizenship is heaven. This is wonderful, wonderful. Yeah? Having a godly wisdom means we serve to see life from God's perspective and act accordingly. Can I say again? When you have a godly wisdom, and you see everything from God's uh, perspective, God's eyes. How many of you understand? When you look at something and look at everybody, look at your situation, look at them from God's perspective, not worldly perspective, and act accordingly. You have to do it according to the will of Father in heaven. Book of Proverbs is a part of the Bible known as a wisdom literature. Proverbs is a full of practical instruction for life. Many Proverbs uh, contract the wise with a foolish and warn against the uh, repeating foolish action. Look at the Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 35. The wise inherited the honor, but foolish he falls up to shame. Have you seen that? If you do the, some foolish things and the shame come to you. Yeah, shame. Anybody knows the righteous man Noah? When Noah drink, what happened? Yeah? He got drunk. He drunk, and after drunk, what was happening? Naked. Do you know I studying the I studying the alcohol in the Bible? Who is the first drunk in the Bible? Noah. <laughs> Noah he was drunk. When he was drunk, naked. Do you know I studying the alcohol? Do you, you enjoy the alcohol? I, I I struggle with it. Yeah. Actually. I, I help. Yeah. You know, 
I was not alcoholic when I drank. I I drank the twenty liters of beer within three hours. Yeah, I struggled. How how many years you drink drinking? How old are you now? Uh, 52. 52, almost yeah, so uh, it's got, since I've <coughs> 32 years you're drinking, since yeah? I've, uh, since I've found you, I, I, I like you. And, and my friend <coughs> is uh, uh, always. Yeah? Anyway, I'll, I'll I understand. We're going to pray for people. This alcohol is. It's, it's got worse. Alcohol is a very, very dangerous. Yeah. <coughs> you spend more than 32 years drinking. You spend at least over, no, it, over 30,000 pounds. It's mainly social. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's, Do you know? It's now if, if I've got any money. It's when the alcohol comes into the somebody's, uh, somebody's body and become drunk, what happened? And Noah, shame. When the alcohol come, shame. And uh, Noah, he had uh, three boys, Sam, Ham, Yabet. And do you know what happened? Noah, he cursed his own child because of alcohol. Can you imagine? When the alcohol come into the, somebody's body, shame come. And not only shame come, he cursed his own child. Can you curse your own child? No. You love your children, but because of alcohol. And then, anybody knows that? When God destroyed the Sodom and Gomorrah, how many people survive? Lord and? Two girls, and Lord's wife turn, and then she become what? Pillar of salt, which means only three people survive from these two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, next to each other. Two cities burned by fire from heaven. And do you know what happened? What they see, what they doing. Two daughters of the Lord, and the Lord, they stay in the cave, and they think about that. They saw the, all the homosexual, all the sexual immorality in, in, in Sodom. Can you imagine when the, when the angel come into the uh, lost uh, house, uh, do you know, these uh, homosexual guys, the man, knock the door. Please, come out. Who? Angels, come out and to sex. What law say? He wanted to give the, his two daughters as virgin. I want to give the, my two daughters, not do it this much. Can you imagine? Already, Lord is uh, damaged his mind. If somebody knocked the door and sex with somebody, can you say to them, I want to give the, my two daughters for you to sex? Can you speak like that? No. The society already damaged. That is why God wait, wait, then nobody repent and send the fire. Burned. Do you know Noah's time? God sent the rain, the water, this whole world. But second judgment, God will send the fire, like in Sodom and Gomorrah. Fire come from heaven to burn people's head, melt, stone, trees, everything melt. Where is it? Under the Dead Sea. When I went to Israel for twenty-three times, whenever I go to the Dead Sea, I swim, and under the under the Dead Sea is Sodom and Gomorrah. Look, Lord and his two daughters survive. They stay in the cave. But unfortunately, they carry the what? Alcohol. Can you imagine? And do you know what these two daughters speak to each other? What they say? Where is our children? And do you know what children? They give the alcohol to Lord. And then the father drunk. And then first sort of sex with her, her own father. What is the generation, son? Moab, Moab and Ammon. Ammon. Moab and Ammon generation from the first daughter and second daughter. You know, when the alcohol come, sexual immorality come. Can I say again? When the alcohol come into the somebody's body, drunk and sex with them. Normally, Friday night and Saturday night, the young girl on the street, they go to nightclub, they come with a condom. Can you imagine in UK? Teenage girls. I know. I used to go to the nightclub. What? In the year. Uh, push the gospel. I know that. For sex. They come to the nightclub for looking for young men and young girls and then for sex. In case they don't want to conceive the baby, they carry the condom. We give the leaflet on the street. One Korean lady, she's a middle of 40, but look like a 
young, only 20, something like that. Oh, she's a middle of 40, 45, 46. But do you know what happened? Young black boy, around the teenage boy, 13, 14, he shake the, our, our event team, he gave the condom to her. <laughs> when she gave the replay, oh! <laughs> Already damaged in UK. But listen, when the alcohol come into your body, your mind, your heart already damaged. And then so many couples uh, divorce because of alcohol. When the alcohol come, destruction come, fighting, very aggressive, hot temper, break the window, break the table, throw away, split, fighting, so aggressive. How many understand what I'm talking about? I know, because I already, you know, experience. When alcohol, I threw the, the bottle. I know, I was drunk. The Bible says, Paul says, do not drunk with alcohol. Drunk with what? Spirit. Holy Spirit. Get wisdom, especially godly wisdom. Godly wisdom. Therefore, please, please remember, Wonderful man of God Noah failed. He cursed his own child. The shame come when the alcohol come into his body. Lot, he went wrong. Sexual immorality. He sex with his own children. What is a mediator? Alcohol. When the alcohol come, these young two daughters, they get sex with their own father because of alcohol with their own normal mind, impossible to sex with their own child. But alcohol damaged their mind. I know, but they need a deliverance. Yeah? Alcohol is damaged the people's life, ruin, the family destroyed. Yeah? Children suffering because of alcohol, the parents. I don't talk about uh, this even today, this even tonight, talking about uh, uh, godly wisdom. Look at the uh, Proverbs chapter 14, 24. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 14, verse 24. The wealth of wise is their crown, but the folly of fools yield folly. Yeah? Wise. Wisdom. It's a crown. 15, 7. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 7. The leaves of the wise spared <coughs> knowledge. Yeah? The leaves of the wise spread knowledge, not so the heart of the poor. Yeah? Leaves of the wise. You have a wonderful wisdom in your heart and when you open your, when you open your mouth full of knowledge, understanding, Gracious thing come out from your mouth. Look at the uh, Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. Proverbs chapter 26, verse 11. As a dog returned to it vomit, a fool repeat his folly. Did you see that? Foolish man, go back to the vomiting dirty things. Did you see the dog? Vomit dirty things, go back there again. Do you understand? Foolish man, they go back there again and again. End up in prison. And uh, it's a terrible things. Don't do it. Don't follow this the worldly wisdom, foolish things. Everyone make mistakes, but the wise learn from their mistake. Yeah. How many of you made a mistake up to now? Sometime, two times you made a mistake. But can you learn from your mistake? You know, Bible write down everything. People's mistake, people's sin people's heart, so many things, everything is in here. We learn from this mistake, from their good things or bad things. You can learn and take a step to avoid uh, repeating them, avoid them. And the foolish, foolish may make the same mistake over and over again and never learn, and never learn their lesson. They never learn from their mistake, the foolish man. Are you a foolish man or a wise man? Can you claim to each other you are a wise man in Jesus' name? Say to each other, you are a wise man in Jesus' name. Amen. You are a wise man, I declare. 
Godly wisdom may look very different from worldly wisdom. Jesus highlighted this difference in his sermon on the mountain. You know, Matthew chapter 5. Anybody know the Matthew chapter 5? Uh, you know, the Beatitude. Look at Matthew 5. Wonderful, wonderful sermon. Actually, Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7. Beautiful message. Do you want to get the wisdom? Please read the three chapter, Chapter 5, 6, and 7. I can read for you Matthew chapter 5, verse 1 to 12. Now, when he saw the crowd, he went up on the mountainside and sat down, and his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will feel filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure, pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Blessed are the those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and force you to say all kind of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way, the persecuted prophet who were before you. Anybody, anybody hear the F word in our mini person last night? How many times he speak of F word? Over ten times he say F word, one guy. <clears throat> Continue to speak very badly. I say, when you speak F word, I say, Jesus loves you. When you say F word, I say, Jesus died on the cross for you. <laughs> I, I, I overcome the evil with the good. Yes. You know, I almost died for 13 times since I came to London. I met all kind of gangsters, drug and alcohol in Brixton area. I love the Brixton. One gangster came and tried to chop my head. Big knife, the meat club. I say, let me pray first before you kill me. I pray, Lord, forgive my sins, forgive his sins. If I die, I'm a pastor. Pastor die, we need another pastor. Can you use this gangster to be a pastor in our church? Forgive his sins, in Jesus' name. When I finish my prayer, oh, I open my eyes, I saw, I saw the, my visions and my head fall on the floor. It's a little bit scary. But at the same time, he's screaming, ah, he chopped his own finger in front of me. <laughs> Blood covered my face, my clothes. Then he was rolling on the floor. I was preached to us, repent your sins. I said, the Lord Jesus said, your personal savior, he accepted. And I called 999. We went to St. Thomas Hospital. It's not possible to restore his finger, the gangster. And I encouraged him to go to the Bible college. He went to the Bible college. Now he's a minister in the church. The gangster who tried to kill me, now he's a wonderful, wonderful man of God. He's not wonderful. This is our God. For me, I met all kind of people. But now we keep on praying, but Brother Matthew. Now your turn. You will see within short time, within two months, yeah, before before end of May, before next month, I telling you, every I'll call everything clean in Jesus' name. Amen. You will see. No more cigarette. No more dirty things. Your body is temple of the Holy Spirit. Be holy. Because I'm holy, what Jesus said. You need to look after your body. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> For example, he said, You have heard that it was said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. Cartel wisdom, yeah? often requires us to do that which is uh, opposite our natural uh, in in inclinations, natural desire, the godly wisdom against our simple nature. Can you imagine somebody smash your cheek, give another one. Somebody ask for one mile, give two miles. Somebody want to try to kill me, I say, oh God, I'm ready, forgive my sin, forgive your sins, I'm ready, use this gangster to be a pastor in our church. That was my prayer. 
I never ever made a plan like that. The Holy Spirit that control my heart, my mouth, and prayer like that. It's not wonderful. When I was preaching in front of an angel station in Central London, I was preaching and preaching. One guy is uh, taller than you, almost, almost six and six point seven foot, almost two meter taller than around the Daniel. You know, big Daniel. <coughs> He's standing in front of me. He say, "Can I beat you?" He want to beat me. I was a policeman. I know how I protect my body, and I hold my Bible like this. I hold my hand like this. I say, to him, "I'm ready." If you want to beat me, you can beat me. I'm ready like this. He was like a boxer. Like this, he punched my face for around three minutes. <laughs> and he over two centimeters cut it off, bleeding. But let the cover hope, you know, running on my face. Suddenly he kneeled down in front of me. He was crying. You know what you say? How can I believe in your God? He was weeping. I said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He has said, the Lord Jesus said, this person is Savior. He's not wonderful. Somebody punched me and uh, he's told me, when I beat you, why are you never angry? I said to him, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. You know, God changed my life. I don't have any desire to angry with you. And thanks for to hear said, the Lord Jesus is his personal Savior. And I gave them my Bible and he gave it. It's wonderful. There is a power in the persecution. It's a godly wisdom is often you know, against our human nature. Yeah? Godly wisdom goes against the uh, uh, conventional wisdom of the day. It is uh, the force on self uh, uh, preservation. But one uh, furthering the kingdom of God, you can only live in godly wisdom when you are committed to uh, crucifying, crucifying our self, our flesh. The living in the spirit. Yeah. It's the most famous scripture. It's my favorite scripture also. Colossians two twenty. Anybody know that? I've been Yeah, you know that very well. I can read for you Colossians two twenty. I have been crucified with the Christ. I no longer live but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I no longer live but can you say to each other, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Yeah? <clears throat> Christ lives in me, brother and sister. This Sunday, you're going to have water baptism. We bury you, and uh, your old self is buried. We're going to have a funeral service for old Matthew. Can you say amen? Amen. Yeah, you happy about that? Funeral yeah, service. Amen. I'll wear a clean shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Invite all your worldly people. Yeah, thank you. Invite all your family. Tell them I gonna have a funeral service. They're surprised. What kind of funeral service for my old self? Mr. Matthew old old man buried in the water. When you raise up from the water, you're a new Matthew in Jesus' name. Amen. New creation in Jesus' name. Amen. You will see. Wonderful, new heart, new mind, brand new person, and live for Jesus. You have the burning desire to meditate the word of God. You have a burning desire to pray, pray, pray. The word of God and prayer, these two things make you holy, make you sanctified. You know, and I'm stand up like by two legs. You know, we have the, like a pillow, pillow of word of God and prayer. Word of God and prayer. We read the Bible today, yeah, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Enjoy. Did you enjoy? Yeah? Thank you. You, you, you read, uh, enjoy the you know, Second King today. Oh, what chapter you finish? Oh, finish all of them. Yeah, well done. Praise God. Well done. Enjoy. Yeah. And then because of uh, I read the uh, uh, Kings today, I think about the uh, King Solomon. Because the King Solomon, wisdom in the beginning, but. He lost the godly wisdom, he keep the worldly wisdom. That is why his life damaged. That is why his kingdom, the Israel, Israel damaged. One leader, his mind damaged. All people damaged. Look at uh, Mr. Putin, his mind not well. Young boys and girls died in Ukraine. Can you imagine? When Hitler damaged, hundred thousand, millions of people died. How many six, how many 
Jewish people died? Six million. Six million. Can you imagine? One leader damaged. Dangerous. That is why we need to pray for leaders and rulers. They need to fear the Almighty God. They need the godly wisdom. Yeah? Godly wisdom is very important. Look at the Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. I can read for Ephesians 5 verse 16 say, Make the most of every opportunity because days are evil. And verse 25, same chapter, verse 25, Husband, love your wives. As you, just as the Christ loved the church, he gave himself up for her. And uh, anybody, husband, love your wife. I love my wife with all my heart. Yeah. The primary way we gain godly wisdom is by learning God's word. Yeah, you can get the godly wisdom through the word of God. Look at the Psalm one one nine, verse one six nine. Psalm one one nine, verse one six nine. Say, I can read for you. Psalm one one nine, verse one six nine. Say. May my cry come before you, O Lord, give me understanding according to your word. Well then, Brother Matthew, you cry before God, yeah? It's good to cry. And then the, you know, I can, and the unfolding of your word give light and it gives understanding to the, uh, to the simple. Psalm 119 verse 130, no one is born wise, we must inquire the wisdom from God if you are to be truly wise. Your command are always with me and make me wiser than uh, my enemy. I have more insight than all my teachers, for I meditate on your statute. I have more understanding than the elders, for I obey your uh, uh, precept. Psalm 119 verse 98 to 100. And the Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 say, Let the word of Christ dwell in you literally, yeah? teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. Immersion in God's word produce a heart of worship and thanksgiving. The heart of worship become fertile soil for seed of wisdom to grow. Do you have a heart of worship? Yeah. <clears throat> I know, Victoria, you have the heart of worship. Wonderful. Yeah. Can you uh, say to me, let the word of Christ dwell in me literally. Yeah, let the word of Christ, let the word of God dwell in me, in my heart, literally. And you'll be very, very mature. Jesus overcome the temptation of evil one by the word. He said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Measure not, live by bread or all, but by every word come from the mouth of God, every word. Jesus prayed to the Father, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. John chapter 17 verse 17. He wanted his followers to set apart from the world, making godly choice and living godly lives. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 15. We can only do that when his word lives in us. Therefore, it's a, let the word of God uh, dwell in us richly. So important. We can also deeply go to the wisdom by carefully selecting those who journey through life with us. Whoever work with the wise become wise. Can I read for you? So, so Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20. Proverbs chapter 13 verse 20 say, Whoever works with the wise become what? Wise. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. <laughs> can you imagine? Now you are so blessed. You working together with the wise, you become wise. Well done. You come here, not just you come here, God open the door for you. Press the bell. <laughs> Knock and door will be open to you. Yeah. Now well done. Yeah, this is the word of
of the law. And the letter we read is James chapter 1 verse 5. Scripture tell us to ask for godly wisdom. Well, if any one of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives all generously and without a reproach, and will be given to him. Ask of wisdom, he will give unto you. Yeah, daily, in the morning, in the daytime, in the nighttime, before you go to bed, when you wake up, pray to Allah, give me your wisdom. Give me your wisdom. Godly wisdom. Every day. Until when? Until you depart from this world, until you die, until the second come of Lord Jesus, you pray to the Lord, give me your godly wisdom. I don't need the worldly wisdom. Yeah? The worldly wisdom is so foolish things in the eyes of the Lord. Paul instructed the Corinthians to imitate me as I imitate Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, even chapter 11, verse 1 say, Those who want the godly wisdom will choose for their heroes, those who experience wisdom in their personal lives. As I told you earlier, the, whoever works with the wise, become wise. You know, the, the, the friend is sharp friend. Yeah, Iron sharp iron. Same things. I know who you are to your friendship. And then, thanks be to God, now you gathering together we edify each other, we encourage each other, supporting for one another, also telling the truth. Who is the one to telling the, telling the truth for King David and King David repented the sins? Nathan, good, good man, Nathan. Nathan, he stands in front of King David. You are the one. You need to repent your sins. David, repent. How many of you need, you, you need a friend like Nathan? Someone who telling the truth. You need that kind of man. He is my Nathan. I am your Nathan also. <laughs> yeah. You're telling the truth. Actually, we edify each other. Yeah. Don't tell me, leave me alone. No, no. You need me. We're supporting for one another. Yeah. God wants us to have His wisdom. He is uh, delighted to give it to us when our heart are set to receive it. However, James goes on to say, but he must ask him faith without any doubting. For one who doubting is like what? The wave of a sea, driven and tossed by the wind. But that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man, unstable in his own ways. You never doubt when you ask. When you're asking God, Lord, give me your wisdom. Do you think God will give unto you or not? He will. He promised. Give you generously. Can you say to each other, when you ask for wisdom, He will give unto you. Say to each other, when you ask for wisdom, He Ask for wisdom. God knows the portion, sorry, position of our heart. Position of our heart. When you are committed to trusting Him and obeying His word, He pour out His wisdom on us. Like Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13. Yeah? Can you look at the Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 13? It's a very famous Je Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29 from verse 11 to 13. For well, I know the plan I have for you, declares the Lord. Plan to prosper you and not to harm you. Plan to give you hope and future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me. When you seek me with all your heart, I will be found by you, declares the Lord. Do you know this is what I promise with you? If you seek me, you will find me. God's plan no harm you, prosper you and give you future. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah? This is the promise of God. You can ask God. If you want to retain, uh, retain the right to disobey, we are double mind and may not receive the wisdom we ask for. Solomon received the godly wisdom when he asked for ask the Lord for it. And second Chronicle chapter one verse ten to eleven. Look at the He became known for the great wisdom, yet he in his later years he turned away from following the wisdom he 
had been given, he disobeyed the Lord and even began to worship idols. 1 King chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. Sister Victoria, can you read for me very loudly? 1 King chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. Unfortunately, this man, King Solomon, he received the God's wisdom in the beginning. But look, can you read it loudly? 1 King chapter 11, verse 1 to 11. Yeah. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, You shall not go into them, neither shall they come into you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unt unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. Hmm. And his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart for after other gods. And his heart was not perfect, the Lord his God. As was, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then did Solomon build an high place for Chemosh, Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. Hmm. And the Lord was angry with Solomon, because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely run the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. Thank you. Your kingdom will divide, God said. God was angry. Yeah, he was angry. Yeah, and then, you know, how many wives? 700 wives. How many concubines? Uh, 300. Terrible. He worshipped all the idols. You just read it. Why? Why ask you to read it? King Solomon, he in the beginning he received the godly wisdom and he misused the godly wisdom for his own selfish desire, for flesh. Be careful, be careful. Don't tell me, oh, King Solomon, no, no. He was so powerful king, full of wisdom. No one compared with this man Solomon in the history of the world. But look, be careful. Receiving wisdom did not ensure that Solomon would follow the path of wisdom. Sadly, he exchanged his godly wisdom for worldly wisdom, unfortunately, and he suffered for it. The last of King 11, chapter 11, details of Solomon's downfall as the Lord removed his hand of blessing from a man who was once great. He was a great king, but God was of everything. Be careful. When you store your stand from say Amen. Amen. I speak to you, I speak to myself. I need to examine my heart. Same time, you need to examine your heart. Proverbs chapter two, verse three to six say indeed, if you call out for insight and cry loud for understanding, and if you look for it, and for silver and, and search for it, and for hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. Let's pray. Father, give us your wisdom. Help us. Lord, we saw King Solomon, most powerful king, Amazing king, but unfortunately, after he received the godly wisdom and he exchanged his godly wisdom for worldly wisdom, and we saw that he was so suffering, he lost everything. And uh, the Israel, the divide because of his sins. Lord, help us, deliver us from all this worldly wisdom. We want to keep the godly wisdom to fear God and you can have a holy life. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. God bless you. Keep on praying for our journey to uh, Iceland. Thank you.